You're tuned into Soul Fusion Cafe, your place for radiant wellness and soul forward living. Join your host, Jess Juntinen, quantum healer, intuitive, and midwife to the awakening spirit as we dive into quantum tools, wisdom teachings, and integrated healing pathways for transformation. You can live a life of freedom to be without limitation. Cozy up, grab your tea, and enjoy this hour of expansion, wisdom, and love. Namaste and welcome to Soul Fusion Cafe. My name is Jess Gentinen and I am your host. I'm so happy to be here with you once again for another installment. Soul Fusion Cafe is broadcast on Oneness Talk Radio. Also, you can find it at YouTube's uh, Oneness Talk Radio page and also catch up with archives at selfascensionstudios.com which is my personal website, or also at Oneness Talk Radio. Um, the website there under Soul Fusion Cafe, scroll to the bottom, you'll see show archives and you'll be there. So you can always tune in to other episodes if you like what you're hearing now and would like to catch up. So this week, what are we talking about? This week is a big one. It is all about our multidimensional presence that is, uh, how to tap into the fifth dimension, let alone what's the seventh and what's the ninth? What are these other dimensions that we're able to tap into and be with? And also celebrating the beautiful full moon. And this artwork is the lovely Farron Peterson. You can check out her art at Studio Farron. She does really beautiful channel work. She has prints. She has all kinds of beautiful work out there. So I thank her so much for uh, her sending me some of these beautiful backgrounds to use for my shows and client sessions and things like that. So today, diving in, multidimensional experience and what is going on right now. We are in April and this week is in we're in the full swing of it. We're in the energy of uh, balance. What is being balanced right now? Uh, 2020 in Ascended Numerology 2020 is the four. And the zero is the infinite. So it's the four with the power of the infinite times two. There's two zeros. And four is perfect balance in Ascended Numerology, which is the numerology I have been trained in and that I share with clients who want numerology readings and how I look at uh, numbers. It's a very different method than some of the other numerology out there because it includes the energy of the zero, includes the energy of the infinite, and it's been practiced since the time of the ancient Essenes and is back on the planet. So the four in ascended numerology is like the equilateral cross. Think about two lines of equal length and them crossing and that there is a perfect balance with the equilateral cross. And in the still center is that balance point, that point of stillness, of harmony, and that is where the heart is. The heart is the center of our perfect balance. When we can come into our heart and truly lift and activate from our heart, we're going to be balanced with our body, with our mind, with our soul and spirit, and all the energies that are coming in around us. So what a beautiful time this year. And then April is the fourth month, right? So April's carrying the perfect balance as well. And the full moon coming in to illuminate us this week. We're already feeling the energy before it's here and after. There's a window of at least three days on either side of the full moon that we are feeling it. So there's a lot of illumination coming forward. Where are you in balance in your life? And what can you do to get more balance? So today we will be talking about multidimensional experience and how to 
to use that in order to lift above the chaos and talk about you know, how can we navigate these times. It's a challenging time. There's the coronavirus on the tip of everybody's tongue. It's on our mind. It's hard to not be impacted by it on a daily basis. So really creating episodes to just have guidance that are specific week by week that we can channel and touch into. And this is the week uh, of four, five is when this show airs, this episode broadcasts. And this whole week, you know, it's just a time to really honor ourselves. There's a peak energy happening. There is a spiral effect that's been in place for some time. And it's, um, we talked about this last week too, on last week's episode with guidance, um, that we could be spiraling up or we could be spiraling down or we could be just rotating in place. So we see people doing all of those things um, at different times and we can catch ourselves going up or down or staying in place. And awareness really is a key component of staying uh, grounded and of being able to catch ourselves so that we can come back into lifting. Awareness, awareness, awareness. Awareness itself is healing and we can't do anything about anything if we don't become aware of it, right? So I have to thank all of you that have been sending in beautiful comments about the shows and episodes. It's been great to be able to go on video. Um, if you're listening to this at uh, Oneness Talk Radio and you want to catch it with video, check it out on YouTube. It will upload. It's uh, usually the day after my show premieres on Oneness. So usually on Monday, you'll see the video on YouTube at Oneness and be able to see this artwork with this portal and this beautiful moon presence that's behind me. And it's just been really fun to connect. And I know that part of my gifts are that I channel energy through my voice, through uh, my own gifts, and it's part of my job here to channel energies of the divine and bring that forward in a way. And I often hear that you know, my voice is soothing, that it really helps people connect, and I'm, I'm so honored and blessed. I will tell you, earlier in my life, I thought I had the worst sounding voice on the planet. I wanted to be able to sing. I didn't think I could sing. I thought my voice sounded terrible. Uh, all those things we go through uh, as children and adolescents and things we don't enjoy about ourselves, but uh, it's really profound to be able to hear and know that you know, my voice really does carry this frequency and it's such a gift to bring it to you. And, and now I do feel uh, totally at ease with my voice. It's part of the divine. And there's one thing Archangel Zadkiel shares is that it's the message, not the messenger. Um, and I think that's just so profound. What is the message you have to share? What is your message? Uh, because it doesn't have to come from some uh, higher place or authority. You are the authority. You are the message. You carry the message just as profoundly as anybody else can. And I think that's so important to remember, especially if you're like in that moment where you're reaching for a dream. What's your dreams? What have you been wanting to bring into the world. Your message is yours and it's unique to you and it matters. You don't have to be a famous person. You don't have to be famous to have an amazing message for the world. You just have to share your gifts the way you feel called to do. And right now is truly a time if you've lost track, what is your dream? What are some of the dreams and visions you have carried that you want to bring into the world? And are you feeding them? Are you giving attention to them? So that when we come out of this intense period of time that we're all going through, you will be set up with so many more things flooding in and not trying to just pick up the pieces and get going. It's time to nurture your dream now, not wait till later. And it's time to really notice 
where is your focus and what are you focusing on? You know, I'm guessing if you're tuning into the show, you already do some things like try to disconnect from mass uh, media, really give yourself time for connection. Um, but it's very important to remember that it can be very compelling to grab the phone and scroll away. I've done it too, just scrolling and scrolling and finally you know it's like put it down and turn it off put it in a drawer disconnect and connect to the divine source within because that brings you totally out of balance to go look at the outside world and technology even though it can serve beautiful things we're here sharing right now for example it can also really be an addiction uh, very much so and it can pull us away from our essence from our co-creative nature it can stop us in our tracks it really can become an addiction to be on uh you know whatever it is if it's netflix if it's computer games if it's phones don't get me wrong there's a balance with everything um but pay attention are you kind of compulsively reaching out to technology to fill yourself up, to distract you. Uh, notice what your energy field is like, being really aware and honest. What does my energy feel like now? You know, and notice that when you're waking up in the morning, what does my energy feel like? Where is it at? And don't judge it. Maybe when you wake up, you have a lot of thoughts in your head um, and they're not positive. Be aware of those thoughts and really try to sit with them and say, okay, where? is this coming from follow them back where are these thoughts originating where are they coming from and just really be with that and then you know take some breaths bring in a gratitude practice say a mantra and if you wake up and you're aware and you feel in a positive space be really aware and follow where that positive uh, space is serving you and how it feels within just cultivating that from the moment we wake up is a very powerful tool for our balance so um yeah guidance for this time i have to definitely give a shout out there's so many healers doing awesome amazing things right now i see you stepping forward doing awesome things uh oneness talk radio go there and just put it on and, and listen there are so many hosts and so many shows with really positive amazing support for right now and what a choice that is to listen to that rather than mainstream media um now i have to give a shout out to you shri and kira they are two of the most amazing beings on the entire planet who have said yes to self-ascension um, they are my teachers and my mentors and been part of my own journey to reignite and awaken to the truth of who i really am while i'm here so i thank them and i bow to them and i really do recommend checking out anything they're putting out there right now for support because they are putting out such pure authentic amazing timely support and their spiritual essentials kit on youtube uh official Sri and kira on youtube is awesome they just posted this recently so if you go to official Sri and kira on youtube you will see the spiritual essentials kit it's like a 10 or 15 minute video with profound information to support you at this time. Um, how do we thrive during this time? And, you know, just to mention a few of the things they shared in there, because I think it's just so uh, profound. They talked about the three real essentials being clarity, connection, and inspiration. And clarity is the the gift of knowing you know where is my energy what am i in solidarity with you know where is my attention at to really have appreciation and gratitude not just i'm thankful yeah but to really anchor in i'm so appreciative of my breath in this moment clarity and if we're not in clarity, this energy is so available right now, but if we're not in clarity, then we're in confusion. And you can see how many 
people are in confusion. It's like that cycle of the spiral that just spins around and around. Sometimes it takes us down or just stagnates, but we can't lift in that confusion. We have to get our clarity. We have to really ignite that um, connection. There's these different aspects of connection. What are we connecting to? Where is my connection? Is it with my body? How are you taking care of the body right now? And again, it goes with the balance so much right now. Taking care of the body. How are you taking care of it? How are you nourishing? How are you loving? How are you supporting your beautiful body of form? Because it is very hard to lift, dear ones, if the body is not feeling safe, loved, nurtured. A lot of the energies with the coronavirus right now on the world stage or at any time when there's a heightened level of chaos in the world, then it invites us to disconnect and forget. Uh, we stop taking care of ourselves maybe and we cycle down, 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 down and it becomes harder to lift. And the body uh, is really feeling it the most, the root center, the, the root center, which is the first chakra at the base of the spine, is being impacted really heavily because the energy around the virus, the real energy is fear. And that is what is affecting people, fear. And that hits in the root chakra really hard because that's our safety. Am I safe? Am I supported? And that's the foundation of the body. Am I safe and am I supported? So how are you supporting your body? Just really being honest with yourself and what are some of the things I can do? If you're a essential worker that has to be out in the world working, bless your soul. If you're out there and you feel like you're being exposed, it's so important to take care of your body right? So important that your body feels as safe as possible when you're out there. Um, and really, you know, if you're at home and you're working from home or you're just not working and you're feeling your safety being shaken, finances, things like that, take care of your body. And notice, what are you doing in your mornings? Do you wake up and do you make your bed? Do you change your clothes and put on clothing that makes you feel alive? Do you have a kind of uh, routine for yourself in the morning to help you connect to body, mind, and spirit, really thinking about those kind of aspects. Um, and if we're not connected, you know, the opposite side of connection um, is the chaos, right? It's the chaos. Uh, that's the feeling that's by and large operating out there right now. A lot of chaos and it just feeds itself fear, anger, grief, and it goes on and on. So it's like, are we connected or are we in chaos? And again, the light of awareness without judgment is perfect. Just notice where you are. Um, and the mind, you know, the mind is part of this connection, big time, right? Where's your mind at? The mind is always active. So think about, you know, how are you being in service? How are you serving yourself? How are you serving the world? And give your mind things to do. Let it connect to, um, guide it to connect to things that are positive and uplifting rather than the chaos. It would love to go there. That's where our ego lives. And it would love to go to that total chaos uh, train. Um, and then, of course, connection with spirit. So important. Really, you know, how are you connecting to your spiritual nature? Is it prayer, meditation, taking time out, taking a sacred bath, taking a sacred walk, and really connecting with your breath and the essence of who you are? And we'll go into multidimensional um, space and discussion soon, and that might help too with this connection to spirit. And then, you know, the other piece of really navigating this time is inspiration. And the opposite of inspiration, right, is tired. So are you tired or inspired? 
Are you feeling inspired by how you can serve right now? And maybe that's serving yourself and your family. Maybe you're serving clients. Maybe you're serving in your workplace. Maybe you're serving, um, you know, in your own little cocoon, but sending light out. But are you in service? How are you carrying that for yourself? And it goes back to like that dream I was talking about. What are your dreams? Are you feeding your dreams? Are you being with them? Are you going with them? Or are you forgetting all about them? Use this time to really feel into that because this can be a real retreat. April's intense. This is a peak moment um, for all humanity. Everyone's really feeling it right now. It will ease up. But right now, it's so important that we're very gentle, mercy, forgiveness. Yes, it's a beautiful retreat time. I do see some people, you know, doing all their spring cleaning. They're writing that book. They're launching their businesses. It's so amazing. But also, you know, if you feel like, oh, I need to do all these things, but I need time for rest. Um, you know, there's a difference between like just being tired because you're spiritually drained and needing rest because your body just needs rest. We're buffering a lot right now, you know, so maybe don't be hard on yourself if you're not writing that novel you always wanted to write. Maybe you really do need to be more restful and purposeful or, you know, we're taking care of our families and we have a lot of additional responsibilities while navigating everything that's going on. So be very, very gentle. So about multidimensionality and lifting into these multidimensional spaces, I think this is such a cool conversation because it's been coming up lately in conversations with clients and other places. Um, and, you know, one place I noticed that too is in my group, uh, Consciousness Evolution on Facebook. It's open to anybody. Please join it. It's all about positive support and raising consciousness and together we are better when we do that. And, you know, but I've been noticing this kind of like, wow, some of us just feel so uh, calm and that's that being in that still center, that balance um, while other people are freaking out and, and you know, why is that or, or what is this about, uh, multidimensional space? You know, I get that question from people and clients a lot too. I'm going to take one sip of tea before I launch into that part. I am drinking mm, delicious white pine needle, lemon, and honey. Uh, I make a tea from the needles. Uh, do not just go strip a tree of needles, please, but be very mindful and connect. But it has been a primary medicine for people. Um, in northern regions for a long time. There's other spruces or pines involved, but you really do need to check into that yourself. I'm not giving medical advice, but oh, is that tasty? And it's so amazing for support, um, especially with the lemon and honey in there after it's been brewed, delicious. Um, just have to share that. I always love to know what tea you're drinking. What kind of tea are you drinking? I like to share what kind of tea I'm drinking. Tea is definitely, it's so medicinal, even if it's not, you know, a quote unquote medicinal tea, just the act of brewing the tea, being grateful for the hot water, pouring it into the cup, smelling the plants, imbibing and tasting them and feeling them nourish you to your cells. It's such a good sacred ritual. I love it. So, but yeah, fifth dimensional space and beyond. So let's start with the third dimension because we have to start there. What's the third dimension? Um, the third dimension is this place like earth that we live on. That's what it is. And it's also this place where thoughts live. Our thoughts are third dimensional and this is the realm of density. Uh, the archangelic realm and ascended masters call this the realm of density. And that means that energy moves the most slowly here. That's why we have a form and it feels solid, appears solid, that we have a chair, a desk, walls. It is a realm of slow, dense energy. 
Um, so things appear solid, even though it's just very packed together molecules. Um, but we're still created of light. It's just moving very slow. And thoughts are part of this. So we might think of thoughts as like, how could they have any energy? But thoughts carry the energy of density as well. And um, right now, you know, it's dense, dense on planet Earth. The planetary thought body is this energy that surrounds the whole Earth. Each and every one of us, our energy does matter. Your energy matters a lot. So whatever you're thinking um, and doing, it does have an impact. As you are going about your day, your thoughts are contributing to the energy you're feeling, and they're also being broadcast out into the energy of the planetary thought body. So imagine, you know, 7 billion some people are all sending out thoughts and feelings and emotions into that thought body. Well, you can imagine the majority of the planet right now isn't in ascended frequencies. If you're listening to this show, you're in a frequency that's higher, not that higher or lower is good or bad. It's just the words that we have <laughs> in this realm, but you're in a higher frequency than the majority of the planet. The majority of the planet is in density, which is very aligned with the ego. And the ego is that aspect of ourselves. It's a, an important aspect. We have to have one. If we have a body and a mind to survive here, then it keeps us safe. It keeps us from walking out into traffic. Otherwise, our soul would just be like, we, this is fun, you know, and run in front of a truck or something. So it tells us, like, hey, be careful, watch out. But it's also become extremely distorted and manipulated so that people are afraid of, of everything. And the ego just tries to stop spiritual growth really hard. It's very aligned with density. What else is aligned with density? Any emotion or feeling that's not peace, love, or joy. That is... Fear, anger, jealousy, grief, uh, sadness, <sighs> hate, lots of that energy on the planet. But those are very aligned with the ego and density experience. And the ego just thrives. It loves to feed on those energies and it loves to keep us there if we let it. And that's the spiral that takes us down, 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 down. So... That's a lot of what's going on. Part of what we're here to do, if we choose to, if we came here to awaken during this lifetime and to support our planet's upliftment, is to anchor in our multidimensional space. So whatever words you use for this, but you, if you're on a path of evolving your consciousness, if you're on a path of lifting your awareness, that means that you're lifting into your multidimensional beingness. We have more than an ego and more than a body. We have many dimensions to us. And there are many dimensions all around us. But the five senses are aligned with the body of form, the third dimension, and the space. So our eyes, our ears, our mouth, voice, smell, all of that takes an in information about the world and tells us, it goes up to our beautiful brain and tells us what's happening and we make interpretations and adjustments uh, and we take action based on those, on that information. But to move into multidimensional space, it means that we're using our senses that are beyond those five senses. We can't uh, see, taste, or feel the fifth dimension with these organs. Sometimes you get sensations in these organs of senses, but you have to be tuned into uh, your intuition and your other sensory perception in order to experience the fifth or beyond. Okay, so another sip. Okay, so what about um, the rest of people? Where are they at? Okay, there is um, a beautiful 
uh, teaching about the Pyramid of Spiritual Awakening. Again, this would be shriankira.com. You can probably find it there. But the pyramid, imagine a pyramid. It's got four layers through this pyramid. The base layer of the pyramid is ego. And we are all born into this part of the pyramid. We're born, we forget everything. We go through the veil of forgetfulness and we're a new baby, a soul inside of this human form. So here we are. And it becomes all about me, right? Everything revolves around me. I do this and then this happens. The world does this and then I do that. And, you know, it's where small children live. Um, and then many individuals just don't evolve past that. It's very much all about me and trying to gratify my emotions and to try to not feel afraid, to try to not feel hurt or scared, but trying to control everything from that frame of mind, from that energy of the bottom of the pyramid, the ego. Then the next level of the pyramid, as we awaken, you know, everyone has to go through this. <laughs> you, you don't get to skip it. There is the spiritualized ego or spiritual activism layer of the pyramid. And this is really earth-like again. And this is a beautiful part of the pyramid because we move into a we focus rather than just me, me, me. It's about we. But at the same time, this we becomes a way of aligning the ego with other egos. So there's a lot of polarity. And this is a world of polarity, so we see it very clearly. It's my, you know, it's our group against your group. Um, this can be politics, religion, uh, environment. It can be anywhere, but it can become dangerous when a group of individuals all organized around egoic uh, principles and ideas are coming together and saying, you're wrong, we're right you're bad, you're bad, you're bad, we're good. No, 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 you know, we are the self-righteous over here and you have it all wrong over there. And that is the most dangerous part of the pyramid because look at what can happen when you get large groups of people together and they're at energized in that energy, but there's still a lot of victim consciousness um, and a lot of abuser, victim, rescuer energy happening, like the victim triangle of those energies playing out. So it's, a, it's an intense part of the pyramid, and that's where most people's consciousness is at right now on the earth. But there's this opportunity to lift into ascension awareness. That's the third level of the pyramid of spiritual awakening. And if you're tuned into this, you're there, you know, um, you're aware that there's more going on than this third dimensional realm. You're aware there's other frequencies and energies, that there's more going on than meets the eye. And you're working on yourself. You're working on releasing old patterns or limitations, things the ego learned. And you're learning how to live in a more spiritually aligned place where it's more about love, it's more about peace, it's more about trying to create those energies in your life and share them out there. And then the very top layer of the pyramid is ascension consciousness. That's when you can really anchor. You're not just, you know, aware and working on it, but you're very anchored in a consciousness that says, I am a multidimensional being. I am here, I am peace, love, and joy, and you're unshakable. It's hard to get pulled down out of it. So in Ascension Awareness, where many of us awakening are, there's other like little strata in each of these levels too. You know, there's like an entry point, there's the swimming in it, and there's like the lift point. So it can be interesting depending where you are. So I would definitely check out Sri and Kira on their website. Um, or do a search for Pyramid of Spiritual Awakening and their teachings because they talk even more about that. Um, but for the purposes of today, I don't think we need to go more uh, in depth with that. So, um, but yeah, density, the world of form is very uh, much in those lower levels of the pyramid where um, it's spiritual activism and us versus them mentality. 
and it just generates more and more conflict and chaos. So multidimensional living, we, we want to live a, lift above that energy. And probably something happened in your life that said, whoa, wait a second, I, I need to get out of this yucky, sticky energy, and I see there is more, and you've had some spiritual awakenings, and sometimes we dip up and down, we have dark nights of the soul, we go down, we lift up, it's all good, it's all perfect, really, we're learning every time, and it's the mastery moment, every time we dip, and we can lift back up, and we find on the journey, it gets easier and easier, the lows aren't as hard or as long, and it's easier to stay lifted, and we are just practicing, we're mastering it. It's not easy to be here in a human form on this planet and lift. It's not an easy job. You are a master if you've been able to get this far because there's a lot of energy that seeks to stop us from doing that. So kudos to you. You've made it and you can keep on going. And right now, though, unfortunately, a lot of people that have been lifting a long time are collapsing. The fear is getting too great. Hopelessness is entering. So those of us that are doing the work to lift, it's very important that we really keep it up. And we really are mindful of where our energy is and really keep up this work. I see you. It's amazing. It's awesome. The world needs us right now. And it's definitely a beautiful thing. Things are moving. Things are happening. Keep going. The fourth dimension, I didn't mention that much, but I can really hear a few people going, wait, what about the fourth? The fourth is collapsed around the third. So if you imagine this was the third, if you're watching me, I have my hand up like a fist, and the fourth, take my other hand and put it over that fist. That's like the fourth, rather than hovering above it, it has suction right to it. They're together and meshed. The fourth is a realm of disincarnate energies. That's where disincarnate beings live. There's energies there that seek to feed off of the chaos. They love anger. They love hate. They love grief. They love all of it. And it's a feeding frenzy. And they will try to interfere with you to eat. They, they want you to stay there. And that collapse happened I think in like 2007 or something. I'm not quite sure, but it happened a while ago. Um, maybe it was 2010, but there was this collapse and they're very stuck together. So we have to like pop through that fourth dimension that is just vacuum sealed around the third. And you can see like that there are beings that get really fascinated and are talking to other beings and things, but they're oftentimes stuck in that fourth dimension and just fascinated, but they're just orbiting, spiraling around or down. They're not getting the lift. You have to move beyond the fourth into the fifth. And it's much like punching up through like cellophane. Imagine like you're a plant growing out of some planted dirt and there was like a layer of cellophane and you just kept growing and burst right through that. And then you're in the fifth. The fifth is beautiful. And a lot of people are talking about the fifth right now. And there are, are some people that say, that's all there is. People don't understand there's more dimensions. So that's why we're going to get into that today a little bit um, because there's so much more. The fifth dimension, as Archangel Zadkiel puts it, is the waiting realm. It really is where we foundationalize to lift into these other dimensions. Um, so it's, it's not really the goal. It's the starting place. We want to get there first, take our breath, take stock, and then realize there's so much more. And the fifth dimension, because so many beings are trying to enter it and bombarding it, um, it's like between the fourth and the fifth dimension, it's getting a little intertwined. There's energy that will bounce us right back off the fifth right now. There's like a mirroring energy. Again, I'd say go watch some of Shereen Kier's videos where they talk about that phenomenon. Um, but there's like so many people pulling at it that there's like the buffer is kind of gone. It's like becoming pulled into the fourth a bit. So we really have to keep lifting after the fifth. We want to anchor in the fifth and lift above. And there's so many beings in the fifth too. It's feeling almost kind of crowded sometimes. Um, 
So we really do, if we're on this ascension pathway, want to keep lifting from there. So, but the fifth is beautiful. It's where all the magic starts. It's where compassion lives. The fifth dimension is all about our compassion. Compassion is to have passion. What do you have passion for? Who do you have passion for? Yourself? Your fellow humans? It's time to really have compassion for ourselves and others. And it's so much easier to have it for others when we can have it for ourselves. So to lift into the fifth dimension, it really only takes a moment. But the best way to do that is to bring a hand to heart, take a breath, and imagine and feel yourself. It helps with your eyes closed at first sometimes that you are lifting up, 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 and you are gazing at your beautiful body of form from this ascended perspective and you are holding the form you're going oh you're so precious i love you you're looking at all the experiences that brought you to this moment and brought your form to this moment and cradling them as well it's truly a moment to cherish and to to lift into and be in up and to really cherish your life, cherish your body, and to help the body integrate with these energies. So that's why some of you might be like, wow, I'm feeling a lot of peace right now, even though there's all of this stuff happening that's bad in the world, quote unquote, just bad, right? Um, Maybe that's why you're feeling so much peace because you have really been able to anchor in this fifth dimensional energy of compassion and love, the calm center of the storm, the peace, the center of the equilateral cross, the heart. The heart is where we lift from and connect to all these other dimensions. We must come from the heart. That's the root chakra of our ascended being. The lower three chakras are the foundation of our body. And we need to love our body. We need to care for it because that is what lets us be in this beautiful world and interact with it. And we are a spirit experiencing a human life. Not a human with a spirit, but a spirit within this human form. And this human form is part of our temple and part of what allows us to experience the divine creation of this planet and one another. There's so much love energy in the fifth dimension. And things manifest extremely fast when we're in that energy. We just have to have the intention and it can happen. So, you know, when I'm doing Avesa balancings for people that can be in person or at distance, we're working in these multidimensional spaces beginning with the fifth. If you've experienced any kind of Reiki or other energy healing, it's happening in these higher dimensions. If that person is in integrity and working in those dimensions, um, that's what's happening. That's why you feel so amazing after a session. And that's when you can get so many ahas and so much inspiration. That's where the answers come from. When we're trying to seek answers from our ego and our mind, it's very limited because it's limited to the third dimension. It's limited by the senses. It's limited the mind. It's the, the mind has a very small perspective. The ego has a very small perspective. And the fifth, we enter our multidimensional beingness and we expand beyond any drama we start to experience true peace true love and true joy and then the clarity and the answers and guidance comes for how to continue to navigate these times so it's extremely important to lift into the fifth dimension and then we can lift into the seventh. It's like we move through the sixth right up into the seventh. And the seventh is all about non judgment. It is clarity. It's like there's no should I, shouldn't I, would have, could have. None of that. 
no judgments about the virus or other people, no judgments about what's going on on the planet and what people are doing. It's an all seeing, all knowing wisdom energy of clarity that comes from being in that space. So a way to lift there is to really, again, hand to heart and breathing, feeling that lift into the fifth and see the compassion that you're holding around the body of form and holding for the form. And then you breathe again and you lift again with your energy. And now you're in the seventh. You're gazing down and witnessing the fifth who is holding the third. The seventh is holding the experience of the fifth who's holding the third. So it's a little bit more crystalline. It's even a little more removed. The fifth can get really still attached to the third dimensional experience, whereas the seventh is saying, yes, I see and feel all the compassion that you have, but I'm here with all this clarity and not judging your experience, not judging the experience of anybody and seeing with this broad picture it's like zooming way out and seeing all the events of your life all those you interact with the whole planet all beings maybe beyond this planet and just seeing this divine cosmic dance and really witnessing it and then the ninth dimension oh it's so beautiful it's crystalline it's pure crystalline connection so you can breathe again lifting from the heart seeing the fifth holding your beautiful form, seeing the seventh that is witnessing the fifth, and being the all that is the oneness present of the ninth. <coughs> Excuse me. It's like I have to clear my throat. I can feel everybody's throat clearing right now. Whenever you're connecting to this video, I feel it. <coughs> So much of this energy right now on the planet, it's like our throat, respiratory is where, right, the virus is attacking a lot of people. And it's like, this is our truth chakra, time to lift into our truth. So on the ninth, we're gazing with this pure divine crystalline energy and experiencing ourselves is crystalline energy because that's what we are and we can witness the seventh who's witnessing the fifth who's holding the third and we can gaze up from the third and see the fifth holding us and see the seventh holding the fifth and see the ninth above all of that and there's dimensions even beyond that but that's what we're practicing right now as ascended beings is this multi-dimensional shifting lifting into the fifth, seventh, and ninth. And the more we can do that, the more of a greater impact we have for ourselves and others. Excuse me, I need like a lot of water so I don't start <coughs> coughing. So just taking all that in and breathing. If you want to know anything more about any of what I'm sharing, Drop me a line at support at selfascensionstudios.com or just at selfascensionstudios.com. Join Consciousness Love Evolution on Facebook. You can search that up or go to Self Ascension Studios on Facebook and you'll find a link to Consciousness Love Evolution there. Uh, join the fun there. It's been so amazing to have an ascended community. And there's also other amazing places. There's the lineageholders.com or lineageholder.com, a blog by Shereen Kira, uh, where they're sharing so much information and support. Check out their website and their YouTube. They have so, so very much that they're offering. They are 100% in service. They, uh, I feel so grateful, it's no mistake that I found them and work with them, but they are bar none the most authentic, real, true deal on the planet right now and it's such a blessing to be able to have guidance like theirs um, at any time but especially at a time like this and um, truly if you have questions or things that you would like to see addressed send them to me I love to do my best to answer questions on the air um, 
and really be here to connect with you all uh, every week. Um, really, it's a, it's a blessing. It really, truly is. We are consciousness coming to life. And this moment is profound. You might feel like, wow, this is the time I have been preparing for all my life. I'm hearing that from so many healers and energy workers and, and those that have been evolving their consciousness. It's like, wow, we've been preparing for this. All of the things that led up to this moment have given us tools and perspectives and things that can help us support ourselves and allow us to step forward with our gifts. The world needs you and your gifts. And when one of us stands in our ascended, awakened presence, we open the door for a hundred thousand more. Isn't that amazing? A hundred thousand more. So as we close today, I just wanna guide us into a brief but powerful meditation a connection. So if you're driving or operating heavy equipment, please don't do it now. But if you're able to close your eyes and take a breath and come back and visit it again, you can, again, check it out at Oneness Talk Radio, at um, YouTube Oneness Talk Radio, or at selfascensionstudios.com. So taking a moment to get comfortable, closing your eyes, and taking a beautiful breath. Feeling this connection to your heart and your breath. Noticing as you inhale, you're inhaling a beautiful crystalline light that is filling you up and nourishing you. And as you exhale, you pass this beautiful crystalline light on to all other beings and around our beautiful planet. Breathing in, feeling that crystalline light vibrating within your cells, your tissues, the marrow of your bones. It becomes you in every way. And as you exhale, you're breathing that back out and it touches every other being. You are the vessel and the conduit of this crystalline light. And see and feel yourself now bringing forward your sacred intentions, your love, your presence, and amplifying them in this crystalline light. Breathing, you're feeling yourself lift into the fifth dimension and you're holding your beautiful form with compassion and love. And you're sending this compassion and love. We all are sending this compassion and love to touch each and every being that are seeking to understand and touch this energy as well. Sending it around our beautiful planet of form as she heals and lifts. Seeing all the miracles that are happening despite the chaos. Grateful. Look at all the beauty that's happening. The earth is healing. Beings are going within to find themselves. An awakening is stirring within many. And we breathe and we lift again and we're in the seventh dimension, feeling a clarity, gazing down at the fifth, holding the third, feeling this non-judgment, just a beingness, a steadiness, a presence. It expands and holds all, touching all that are ready to feel this presence. And we breathe, lifting again into the ninth, feeling pure crystalline energy, feeling absolute oneness. And that is touching each and every being that is ready for this gift as well. Noticing the connection between us all noticing your connection with the universe, feeling this portal that is lifting you, lifting you, integrating these energies into your body of form. 
allowing yourself to rise into these energies more fully integrating breathing feeling the gratitude and the love that you truly are and as you come back and open your eyes just notice how you can continue to carry this energy even once you've opened your eyes and are gazing around you're seeing with the eyes of form, but you're also seeing with the eyes of the formless. Feel the gratitude for all that's being offered in this moment. <clears throat> Feeling the gift of your multidimensional experience and practice this often. Know that all is truly well. You are exactly where you need to be, and there's always a choice that you can make to pop or drop, to lift or fall, but you can always choose again. You're a great master walking in form. You have all the tools you need. You have all the knowings inside. You are that which you seek. May you know it beyond all shadow of a doubt now. Namaste until we have the pleasure to be with one another again. I'm sending you all my love, blessings, and support. Have a beautiful day. You've been listening to Soul Fusion Cafe with Jess Juntinen. Connect with Jess and learn more at her inspiration hub, selfascensionstudios.com, and over on Instagram at joylovejess.com and Soul Fusion Cafe Radio, or over at Facebook at Self Ascension Studios and Soul Fusion Cafe Radio. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Namaste and many blessings. <laughs>